My name is Gammy Schmidt. I'm the director of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies here in New York City. I'm going to talk to you uh, a little bit about how we know the planet is warming. We have enormous amounts of evidence of changes of the Earth system. Temperatures in weather stations dating back hundreds of years. Ships traversing across the ocean and taking temperature samples there. Glaciers melting. Shifts in ecozones as whole ecosystems respond to the changes in the Earth's climate. Putting together that information is actually a little tricky. When people were first starting to measure temperatures, when people first started to record what the weather was like, they weren't thinking about trying to estimate what the global mean average temperature of the planet was. They were trying to keep track of local weather, make local weather forecasts, or keep track of the things that were important for their crops and agriculture at the time. It's only been in the last 50 or so years that we've been trying to take that information and create a history of change over the whole planet over a long time period. And so we're taking something that was not designed to do what we're doing with it now and trying to make the best estimate of what actually happened in the past. Our raw material are the temperature measurements that are associated with stations all across the world. Recently, you may have heard about record-breaking years or record-breaking months in the global temperature records. And that's true. In these records, that we put together that date back to the 19th century, we are seeing this year, last year, and the year before, record-breaking temperatures. In 2014 was the warmest year on record. 2015 was warmer than that. 2016 has started off so warm that we're already predicting that 2016 will be the warmest year in all of the records as well. But how certain are we of this? Is it possible that all of the uncertainties in how you put these things together, the adjustments that you need to make to correct for you know, old instruments or changes of location. Is it possible that these things are actually fooling us? These are questions that we've been asking for many years. We've been looking at this data again and again and again, bringing in new data that we have digitized from old archives. And what happens when you put all that together is that you can make estimates of what would happen if we just dropped out half of the data, or if we only use data from this kind of instrument. Each of these independent assessments ends up giving us the same answer. The answer is that the planet has been warming, and particularly in the last 40 years, the planet has been warming at a pretty steady trot. What you see is a relatively slow rise in the early part of this century, a kind of flattening in the mid part of this century between about 1940 and 1970. But then since 1970, there's been this steady warming with ups and downs and some years being warmer than other years, but a long-term steady increase in how warm the planet is getting. 2015 was a record warm year. 2016 is looking like it's going to be an even warmer year. Our ability to predict these things comes from the quality of the data that we've put together. We can use that information that we have, we can understand why things change, and they do change. They change because of volcanoes, they change because of El Nino events, they change because we're increasing the amount of greenhouse gases in the air, and that is causing the whole planet to warm. One of the things that we do here at the at NASA GIS is we combine our understanding of the data that we're seeing with simulations of the whole system to try and explain why those observations are changing the way they do. The models that we build are a kind of jigsaw puzzle where we put in each of the key processes, cloud formation, uh, the winds moving the ocean around, rainfall patterns, sea ice changes, sea ice reflectivity. We put all of that physics in and then we see how that whole system reacts, not just on seasonal cycles, not just on weather timescales, uh, but on climate timescales. What happens when we have a big volcano? What happens when we increase the amount of greenhouse gases? What happens when we wobble the Earth's orbit 
what we find is that these models and the emergent patterns that come from them actually give us a skillful reproduction of what's happened in the past. That allows us to test whether it's this cause or that cause, it's this driver, is it greenhouse gases, is it the sun, is it volcanoes? We can create the fingerprint of change that's associated with each one of those and then look to see in the record which ones of those fingerprints match up to the actuality. When we do that, what we find is that the long-term warming that we're seeing, that we're experiencing right now, is dominated by the changes in greenhouse gases. So when people talk about the record warm temperatures, it's not just a statistical fluke. It's happening for a reason that involves us. What it means is that if we don't change those activities, that if we continue along a business as usual path, we aren't going to hear the end of these record breaking temperatures. And not just in temperature, in rainfall intensity, in the loss of sea ice in the Arctic, sea level rise, heat waves, glacial retreat. These records will continue to be broken, not year after year, but often and increasingly often. One of the neat things about playing with these observations is that all of this data is public domain, all of it is online. We'll give you some links at the bottom that will allow you to download this data, uh, play with it yourself. And so you don't need to just trust what NASA or NOAA or the UK Met Office tells you is going on. You can actually dive in and look at it yourself. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about or where you can get hold of the data, uh, just put it down uh, in the comments below and we'll try and answer them. Uh, if you want to see more, videos uh, like this, talking about uh, the physics that's going on here, uh, just subscribe to this channel and we'll see you again soon.